Alrighty. This is Algebra 2. This lecture will go along with Worksheet 826. I'm going to be popping in and out of the frame. Uh, this is Algebra 2, OAS A2A15 is the standard. We're going to be solving a variety of equations and identifying those that have no solution and those that have an infinite number of solutions. We're going to start out with just basic equations that only have one solution and we'll work into the others later. We're going to be using the properties of equality. The properties of equality allow us to do operations on one side of the equation to get the variable by itself and do those same operations to the other side of the equation just to keep the equation a true statement. So uh, I'll be working through these equations and keeping the properties of equality in mind. I'm always going to be doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. And when I get done, hopefully the variable, the letter, will be all by itself on one side and whatever happens on the other side will be my answer, providing I haven't made an arithmetic mistake. With that in mind, let's start with something like this. Solve x plus 4 is equal to negative 12. This is just like a free algebra problem from way back when we were little. And uh, If I wanted to get this x by itself, which I do, that's called solving. When you say solve, it means get the variable. Variables are letters like x, y, z. Uh, they're going to change from problem to problem, the value of that letter will change from problem to problem. So we call it variables. Fours, for instance, and negative twelves, no matter where you see a four or a negative twelve, it's going to be worth four or negative twelve. These are called constants. So we have a variable and two constants. I want to get this variable by itself on one side of the equal sign. So I'm going to get rid of a plus four by subtracting four. As soon as I do that, this is gone. I have x all by itself. But in order to stay in balance, I've got to use the properties of equality which say that if I subtract 4 from one side of an equal sign, I have to subtract 4 from the other side. When I go ahead and rewrite my equation, this is now gone, and I say x is equal to, and then I use my rules for addition and subtraction, which tell me if I'm trying to add or subtract these together and I see that they're the same sign, which is to say they're both negative, negative 12 and negative 4, if I'm trying to add or subtract those and they're the same sign, I add them together, and keep whichever sign they are. If they're the same sign, we add and keep the sign. Some kids get a little confused there. They say, well, two negatives makes a positive. Well, that's only true if we're multiplying. We're not multiplying here. We're subtracting four from this side and subtracting four from this side. I look up here and I see that both of these are negative. So when I'm subtracting, if they're the same sign, I add and keep the sign. Okay. And once the variable's by itself, whatever happens on the other side of the equation, is our solution unless I've, you know, we've made a mistake. Well, there we go. Uh, in a situation like this, I've got two-thirds x is equal to 18. That's two-thirds times x. I want to multiply, I've got to multiply two-thirds, so I want to divide by two-thirds. And from back when we were little, hopefully we remember to divide by a fraction, you just invert and multiply. I'm going to multiply this side by 3 over 2. Multiply this by 3 over 2. Remember, when you multiply a whole number by a fraction, you can put a 1 under it. You don't have to. But this would give me 54 divided by 2. At 18 times 3 is 54. 1 times 2 is 2. 54 divided by 2 is 27. Or you could cancel this and call that a 1 and that a 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Any way you go, this is going to turn into 6 over 6, which is 1. 1 times x is x equals, and because I multiply both sides by 3 halves, whatever happens here will be my answer unless I mess it up. This is 54 divided by 2, which is 27. Here we've got an equation where we've got to open parentheses using the distributive property, then combine like terms if there are any, and collect variables if we need to. Collecting variables variables is what we do if we have a variable on both sides of the equal sign. So I'm going to open parentheses and rewrite the whole thing because I'm not in a hurry. Three X minus nine. I've multiplied both of those. Then I'm going to, there are no like terms to combine over here. That's an X term. That's a constant a variable term and a constant. You can't combine those on this side of the equal side. I can't, it's the equal sign. I can't combine these because I have a variable term and a constant. So 
So what I'm going to do is collect variables. What that means is I'm going to look at these two, ask myself which of these terms is smaller, and then undo it, so to speak. Which, in this case, 3x, you could think of it as being smaller than 6x. So I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to make it turn into a 0 by just subtracting 3x. This side now just has negative 9. That's all that's left here. On this side, I'm also going to subtract 3x just to stay in balance. What I just did was I employed a property of equality. The properties of equality say, if you do one thing, you do something to one side of an equation, as long as you do the same thing to the other side of the equation, your equation will still hold truth, as long as you're not divided by zero. So, and there are a few other exceptions, but for what we're doing, th this worked just fine. Uh, I bring everything down, adding and subtracting as I go. This just comes straight down. This is 6x minus 3x, they're different signs, so I'm going to subtract just like we did when we were little. Oops, from the elder to subtract. 6x minus 3x is 3x. And I keep the sign of the one with the greater absolute value, the one that would be greater if they were both positive. It's plus. Equals, this turns into 0, and 0 minus 9 is negative 9. Now, I've got a, an equation where I want to get this x by itself. If you have something added or subtracted, then something multiplied, you want to get rid of what's added or subtracted first, and then get rid of what's multiplied or divided. In this case, it's multiplied. So I'm going to add 27. We undo it, so to speak. I'm going to add 27 to both sides. Rewrite my equation. 27 minus 9 is 18. And then divide both sides by 3. I want this x by itself. That's a multiplied 3, so I divide by 3. And x equals 6. And once I get my variable all by itself, the letter is the variable, all by itself on one side of the equation, using the properties of equality. Whatever's on the other side is my solution, unless I've made an arithmetic mistake. And believe me, I make them. You're going to see me make lots of them. If you see me make one, call me on it. Of course, this is virtual, so it's going to be hard for you to do that. <laughs> I'll check and see if I've made it. I don't think I have. 27. 27 minus 9 is 18. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. Okay, here's another type of equation where we have to combine like terms. I've got two terms over here that I can combine. And then I'm going to have x terms on both sides. So I will uh, use my properties of equality. So here we go. I'm just going to combine these like terms. 11 minus 7. I can combine those. Those are both constants. 11 minus 7 is 4 plus 3x. It doesn't matter which one you put first. You call it 3x plus 4. It doesn't matter. Uh, 6x minus 3x is 3x plus 5. I combined these like terms on this side of the equation. Now I'm going to collect my variables. But when I collect my variables, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm trying to subtract the smaller of the two variable terms from both sides. I see they're the same size. So what I do is I just subtract 3x from both sides and see what happens. And what I wind up with is 4 plus 0, which is 4, is equal to 0 plus 5, which is 5. If you are col uh, so collecting your variables, that means doing whatever you have to do to get them on the same side, and they disappear, then the statement that's left is either going to be a true statement or a false statement. If it's a false statement like this one, we say there are no solutions. that would be our answer because our variables disappeared when we went to collect our variables they disappeared and so the, the remaining statement is either true or false and in this case it was false that means there is no value of x that you can plug in here here and here that will make this equation true okay let's take a look at this one uh, 6x plus 5 minus 2x is equal to 4 plus 4x plus 1 what i want to do is combine my like terms over here that's 4x plus 5 is equal to 4x plus 5. In this case, when I go to combine, uh, to collect my variables to get them on one side of the equal sign, normally I'd be saying, well, I'm going to subtract the smaller of these two. Well, they're the same size. So when I go to collect them, you'll see that they're just going to disappear. My variables disappear. I get 4x minus 4x is 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. 4x minus 4x is 0, 0x, and 0 times x is 0. 
then zero plus five is five. This time my equation, when I collected my variables, my equation was left with a true statement. Five equals five, that's, that's true for all cases. And so what that means is that there are an infinite number of solutions. example of an equation in which there are no solutions, an equation in which there are an infinite number of solutions. Literal equations, we're not going to deal with that today. We'll get into those later. Uh, so I'm going to stop right here with the lecture and just review it real quick. We're going to be solving a variety of equations that you know, identify those that have no solutions those that have an infinite number of solutions, and those, of course, that which you can just solve. We're going to use the properties of equality. That means we're going to be doing the same thing to both sides of the equation, adding the same thing to both sides, subtracting the same thing from both sides, multiplying the same thing by both sides, and in cases, dividing uh, both sides by the same thing. Those are the properties of equality uh, that we're going to be employing to solve these basic types of equations. And if we don't make any arithmetic mistakes after we use the properties of equality and get the variable all by itself on one side of the equation, whatever's on the other side of the equation is the solution if there is a solution. Sometimes there isn't a solution. You collect your variables, the variable disappears, 3x minus 3x is 0, you're left with 4 is equal to 5, that's a false statement. We interpret that to mean there is no solution. Sometimes you'll collect your variables that gives me 4x plus 5, 5 plus 4x, 4x plus 5. When I collect my variables here, subtracting 4x from both sides, the 4x has disappeared, leaving me with 5 equals 5. When we collect our variables and they disappear and we're left with a true statement, that means there are an infinite number of solutions. Okay. And we'll get into literal equations a little later. Alrighty, I hope that makes sense. Uh, you can work them in class. I'll be willing to help you in class. Uh, those of you who are doing this virtually today, you'll be in tomorrow, and I can help you with the worksheet tomorrow if you need any help. I don't think you will, but uh, if you do, I'll be here for you. Good luck. <laughs>